Hi, welcome. Inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room today, I have a guest with us today. We're going to be talking about NASA's Exploration Habitat Academic Innovation Challenge. Um, Laura Bailey, you are the Exploration Augmentation Module Manager. That is a mouthful. So if you could, first, welcome and thank you for joining us today. If you could briefly explain what your role is. Sure, thank you for having me today. Um, the Exploration Augmentation Module is actually the first crewed element. It's a habitable element following the Orion, and the expectation is that it will be in the lunar vicinity orbiting um, the moon, and that it will serve as sort of a platform for us to conduct proving ground experiments for habitation, for long duration exploration. So that's one of the roles that we have <coughs> with the International Space Station is, is learning the knowledge and gaining all of that that we can apply for future spacecraft. Absolutely. And so there are a number of experiments that have been conducted over the years in the International Space Station to work us in that direction as well. This next habitation element, the reason why it's different is because it's actually um, in an area that's outside the Van Allen belt specifically, so we're having a different exposure, a different deep space exposure that mimics the, the transit to Mars that includes radiation. Okay. So let's talk about XHAB. What exactly is XHAB? Or the XHAB Challenge? Right. So the XHAB Challenge, XHAB stands for Exploration Habitation, and it's actually an academic innovation challenge um, that involves universities across the country um, who submit us proposals on various topics uh, and ideas about how they can create innovative ideas for crew habitation elements. So, can you tell me where the idea using the student challenge came from? Sure. Um, it's actually the brainchild of a guy straight out of JSC here, one of our engineers. His name's Chris Kennedy. Okay. A few years back, he was the project manager for a surface habitat mm -hmm. that actually has lunar and Mars applications. And he sort of came up with this idea to involve university students, um, not only from the standpoint of, you know, doing some public outreach for universities, but also including, trying to be inclusive and in hearing innovative ideas that students might come up with for habitation and in terms of, um, you know, architectures or different ideas being very inventive. So you guys have already selected some teams. Can you tell me a little about that and who that is? I mean, sure. Um, so there were a number of universities who had submitted uh, proposals. Um, we're actually sort of engaged with seven of them, okay. but three of them specifically were, are being funded and supported directly um, out of the Exploration Augmentation Module Project. Um, that includes the University of Colorado at Boulder, uh, Rice University in Houston, and the University of South Alabama, actually, this year. Okay. Can you tell me briefly how these um, proposals are judged? Yeah, so that's actually a pretty complicated process. Mm -hmm. We have several um, several folks who are part of the judging. <clears throat> Excuse me. We review several um, different uh, proposals for essentially technical content, the clarity, um, their academic integration in their university and other universities. Um, so there's a lot of criteria that goes into it. And we, among the people who are reviewing these proposals, there's a variety of different subject matter experts that sort of cover the broad areas of, of different elements of, of habitation. And so were these the, the technologies that NASA identified? said, okay, we have this specific need, and is this how we develop the, okay, this is what we want you to go out and work on for us, or how did we? Yeah, yeah, so there's, um, there. although there are uh, certain um, topics that we actually propose in mm -hmm. a given year, um, they actually change from year to year, you know, different topics that we, habitation type <laughs> topics that we propose. Um, but at the same time, universities are also allowed to be creative and come up with their own topic as long as it's related to deep space habitation. You know, they, they, those topics are welcome as well. Sure. Well, and that makes sense because we don't know all the answers and it's kind of cool to get others' insight from, from another perspective and perhaps maybe someone steps up to the plate and says, you guys might need this. Yeah, yes. exactly. I think that's great. <clears throat> um, also, can you tell me about some of the previous XHAP Challenge projects that we have uh, yeah. Um, so last year, geez, there were several 
that we had last year. Um, I think there were five total. Of those that I can think of the, uh, off the top of my head, um, we had a vertical habitation architecture that was presented to us, a, a horizontal architecture, habitation architecture that was presented to us, um, a robotic plant growth system. Um, there was also a logistics uh, outfitting for you know internal architecture and innovation in that so we've received a lot of different kind of ideas it's been great working with the students great well thank you so much again for coming out and talking with us about this it sounds exciting and best of luck and to you and your team thank you so much thank appreciate you. the time thank you